Lucinda, it's All Ireland Champions. Can you believe those words? You've been, I suppose, on a personal note, you've been quite a journey. But uh, what a what a victory of your side today! Oh, it's just amazing. Like, uh, like I belief that the girls could do it all year. I didn't know if I'd be back myself, but like, it's such a good team, and we've so many younger ones coming up. It's a strong panel, and everyone's pushing everyone at training. It's so competitive, so. Like, it's the younger ones that are pushing us on, and <laughs> there's no point. You, you don't go to training given you have to give it 100% or, you know, you're not at much. So, yeah, no, it's great to win with these girls as well. Like, we've been through so much. Like, we've had wins and we've had losses, and we've just gained experience over the year. And it's, you know, it's really stood by us. And this year, you know, like, we were down, you know, there's been close games there the last few games but we never ga- gave up and we got over the line so no it's good now it was special scenes because it was that type of performance where you literally had to empty everything leave it all out on the pitch Sarsfields kept coming back but you, you always found a way back into the game yeah god it was such a hard physical game and we knew they were going to be so tough um but look i have every faith in the girls and i knew like they were going to be tough but we were good enough i knew we'd be good enough to get over the line if we just gave it our all which we did and no we're really happy now so such special scenes at the end always with a victory but it felt even more extra special if, if that can make any sense you know you're up against Sarsfields a dominant force but it was just an outpour of raw emotion from you and all your squad a very emotional time I bet yeah like just looking up in the stand and seeing all the support you know you have the same faces that have just supported us throughout the years and they're they're just there all the time after the matches through wins and losses um and we've there was seven buses that went from dixborough it's such an amazing club and very supportive like the ga the hurl and camogie are amalgamated there and you know we're all the one and it's just great support from from back home kilkenny Sarah Dervin watched the game with us. She particularly pointed out your impact from the from the bench of being a key point in the second half. I suppose from a personal note, you must have been delighted to be out there. Was there times you didn't think you would be? Oh, definitely, sure. In September, we were playing a challenge match against De La Salle and just unfortunate, I broke, um, the bone came out through my hand, so I just thought... Oh, ouch. Yeah, and oh, sure, look, I thought I was gone for the year. I didn't think I'd be back. It was just Donal, our coach, Donal Carroll, sure. He'd nearly expected to be back the week after, you know. But anyway, he said to come to training and sure do a bit of the fitness. And then when I had a hurl in my hand, I felt fine. And yeah, look, I just gave him my all at training. And it's a really hard team to make. And that team, like, they were excellent all year, you know. And I'm just glad that I got the chance and I was, you know, able to just do... What I could, you know. <laughs> you, on a personal note, you had some amazing news yourself earlier on in the year. It's ju- uh, it's remarkable that you're out on the pitch uh, after that. I'm, you know, it's just staggering that you, you know, the commitment to the cause and to yourself to get back. It's I don't really have the words to to describe that. It's just part of the norm, really, for someone in Kilkenny, is it to get back playing camogie straight away? Yeah, Osher, my son Elijah, he's amazing. Uh, like in fairness, he sleeps fairly well at night, and my partner Derek, he's been so supportive as well. So he's minding him now at the moment. Um, but yeah, do you know, I'm just used to kind of doing fitness and it's great to be part of a team. And yeah, it was just good to get back and be around people again. You have to have like kind of, you know, an outlet as well. You can't just stay cooped up, you know. So yeah, yeah, no, it's good now. There's not too many um, new mums have an All-Ireland medal straight away. It's it's just remarkable. You know, yeah, it's my first All-Ireland club medal, so I didn't ever think I'd get one. But, you know, it's just great to be part of that club. And we've really developed and improved over the years. And we have a fantastic management team as well. There's just so much involved. And oh, they're just excellent, so they are. Congrats again. It's a truly remarkable story and uh, what what a victory for Dixborough today. Thanks very much. Thank you. Aoife, we're having a little bit gig- giggle here. You don't know your personal tally. I think it's 10, but uh, you said you didn't know what the score is, but you certainly know you're all Ireland champions. Yeah, that's it. Um, when the final whistle went, um, I knew we were up anyway. I didn't even know what the score was, to be honest, but uh, oh, it's unbelievable. Some some feeling. On a personal note, is there days that you know you feel like you're on from the off? 
yeah look um we kind of go through patches as well uh we're on it and then we could drop off for a little while and Sarsfields really came at us there in the in the second half and we had to fight back and credit to every single person on on the field there and um, put in a huge battle and it was a it was a very good match yeah you see some of the scenes there afterwards they're pure raw utter motion that that's why you train for i guess that's why you try and be in situations like this yeah 100 percent. yeah um as a young girl growing up, you, you dream of winning a Kilkenny County final and here we are on all Ireland final day um, in Crow Park winning an all Ireland final and yeah, it's, it's some feeling, it's, it's incredible, I actually can't even put it into words. On a personal note, not a bad, I suppose, venue or situation all Ireland final to, to choose to be player of the match? Oh yeah, look, uh, we, we, we don't go, we're not a team of individuals, we're, we're a huge, a huge um, group and we all stick together look I, I got out there but any, any one of those girls could have got it on any given day and look some days I have bad days and they have to pick me up and look we, we all fought out there today and getting player to match it's it's a great honour but um, it's down to getting over the line there and being all Ireland champions as a team. Did you always believe was it always a target to try and go all the way? Yeah, look, um, we, we took a game by game this year and I think that really stood to us as well. Um, everyone wrote us off after we won the, the county championship in Kilkenny. Um, we were underdogs, I'd say, going into every single match and hopefully people will start giving us the credit we deserve now, but we'll see how it goes. Um, we, we just believe in ourselves and that's all we need, so it's unbelievable. Without going too much with Kilkenny, Camogies is, is a wonderful place at the moment. You, I suppose you kind of build on that positivity, I guess. Yeah, look, that's it. It's a huge battle to get out of Kilkenny alone. Um, there's huge uh, teams competing in there. And look, it's great. It adds to our performance as well, having those tough battles along the way in Kilkenny. Um, and that's what stood to us, uh, in fairness to the Kilkenny County Board. They're doing a great job. So we'll just hopefully keep that going now and bring it into inter-county season. You certainly finished that game like red hot. I think it was seven in a row there you got. Did you believe, Do you can you can you allow yourself to believe that you're in this type of zone that, you know, okay, we have a right good chance here? Yeah, look, um, it's actually stood to us all year. We've built huge character in our team and credit to Catherine Peters as well doing the fitness work with us all year. We were probably giving out from time to time. We were still doing fitness work there on Tuesday, just gone. So um, we thought she might gi- give us a break there, but it obviously stood to us there today and it, we needed it to get over the line. Well, over the line, you did get All Ireland champions. God, the smile is getting wider. <laughs> it's uh, it, it's going to be a special Christmas, no doubt at home. Yeah, look, I was saying it. I was saying it previously. I said um, I don't need any presents from anyone this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I got what I wanted, and look, this will stand to me for for years to come. And what a bunch of players to do with as well. Well, enjoy. There's a, a I suppose a busy, quite Christmas ahead, no doubt. Oh yeah, we'll we'll, we'll tell people that anyway. <laughs> Thanks, William. Jenny, you're after walking up the Hogan stand and coming down with silverware. This, I suppose, the smile says it all. But what a day for your side! Oh yeah, look, it's an absolute dream come true. Um, to to be standing up there on, at the Hogan stand, it, it's definitely uh, a little girl's dream. Um, so I'm absolutely delighted to be living this dream at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose the manner of the victory as well. Sarsfields, I'm sure, despite your best efforts to focus yourself, everyone's talking nationally about three in a row, but my God, you were on it from the first whistle. You were so determined today. Yeah, no, look, we, we knew we had to put up a, a tough battle if we even had a chance of coming near Sarsfields. They're, they're an amazing bunch, and look, they're not going for three in a row for no reason. Um, but yeah, no, look, um, we dug deep today, and I think we've been doing it all year. Um, and look, we're just delighted to be coming out on the other side. Yeah, it was an enthralling game as a neutral watching on. You started the better, then they got the goal, then you reacted well, but still only a point up at half time, despite probably doing the majority of the hurling. Yeah, no, look, we, we did go in at half time happy. Um, you're up by a point with the Rain and All Ireland champions. Um, but we knew Sarsis are going to come out gu- guns blazing in the second half, and they did. Um, but look, we, we dug deep, we, we kept hurling, which we've been doing all year, and yeah, just absolutely amazing how to be lifting the cup. Yeah, even the second half, Sarsfield hit a mini purple patch, but maybe they didn't get as many scores as that purple patch. He kind of held strong and then just foot down at the end. I think it was seven in a row there. Yeah, no, look, we definitely keep um, our supporters on their toes, definitely. But um, yeah, no, look, our like t- fair play to Catherine Peters and um, David Carroll. They've been great help this year and our fitness levels have been brilliant. Um, and David Carroll, 
he's he's made us deal with being uncomfortable and that's what we were today we were uncomfortable for five or ten minutes there in the second half um but yeah we just dug deep and we kept with sarsfields and look we were delighted then to, to be coming out with all ireland champions yeah because it was a bit of everything it was character it was fitness it was hunger it was determination you just saw the line and storm for it yeah definitely look um that bunch of group group of girls there um, we all dig deep for each other. Like we, we'll never, we'll never give up um, for each other. And yeah, no, it's, it's just amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was a beautiful line in your speech then as well. You talk about your own sisters, blood sisters, yeah. and team sisters as yeah. well. It's the old cliche, but such a spirit, such a an adventure that your side are on. Yeah, no, look, we, we've all grow, grew up together. Um, we've all been kind of together since nearly under twelves, um, and then we went to school together. Like, and I'm lucky to have my own two sisters on the team with me as well. So winning just, it makes it that more special to be so close with with that group of people. And yeah, no, look, uh, we'll celebrate tonight together anyway. I was about to say, the the family will be in full force tonight. It's a brilliant per, uh, Christmas present. Oh yeah, definitely. Look, I, I think uh, the turkey will be replaced with the cup on the table this year. <laughs> It's uh, all Ireland champions, senior champions, despite a little bit of a false pie in the in the speech. But that's just can you believe those words? No, it's, as again, as I said, it's it's a dream come true. It's it's something that you dream of growing up. Uh, last year we were sitting there on the couch watching it on the telly, and now we're there living the dream. So yeah, no, absolutely delighted to be honest with you. Well, pinch yourself. The dream is real. You are all Ireland champions. Go and celebrate it. Thanks a million. Thank you. Full time in Crow Park, Sarah. <laughs> Celebrations, Kikini celebrations, Dixborough celebrations. Maybe the result that we didn't see coming, but a deserved victory for Dixborough. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Dixborough came out here with all guns blazing. Um, they took the game to Sarsfields. I think their work rate was absolutely off the charts. Um, they found each other very well. Um, and unfortunately for Sarsfields, it just wasn't their day. Um, Dixborough just crowded them out and um, were just, just a better team, unfortunately, on the day. You could tell that straight away, even in the opening couple of minutes. Sticks were on it. There's a couple of tactical changes. They were on top tactically and, I suppose, emotionally in the first half. Yeah, like they were. They they set up with the sweeper. They kind of cut out um, the space that was inside to that lethal full forward line, and they really did just crowd them out and made life very hard for Sarsfields, even getting the passes off to work on the attacks. And I suppose um, Eva Pendergrass was absolutely unbelievable on the freeze. Um, she nailed every single one and it was just, you know, they're deserving winners today, yeah, absolutely. And you thought even Sarsfield's getting that goal just before half time, but there's a couple of sticks were scores and just got back, it was important, they got back in front at half time. Yeah, like Sarsfield's got an unbelievable goal that came from a puck out from the Dixborough and um, Orla McGrath had a serious run through the middle and passed it off to Siobhan who had a fantastic one-handed touch into the back of the net. And then at six per, like unbelievable, came out and got the next two scores, which reduced the deficit straight away. Um, so like they never gave up the work rate. Um, Orla McGrath was taking a, a shot from 60 yards out, and Eva Prendergast came out of nowhere and got a vital interception and forced um, Orla to hit a white. Yeah, you could have said at half time, Dixper did all the hurling in the first half. Still only a one point advantage as we try and battle over the PA system, but they could have wilted at half time instead. It was Sarsfields who took control in the third quarter at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Sarsfields came out um, and up the gears. Sarah Spellman was fantastic in the opening 15 minutes. She was everywhere. I think she won three bike frees for Sarsfields. Siobhan McGrath came out of the blocks, got two points from play. But slowly but surely, Dixborough weathered the storm and got the crucial scores that when they needed and, and vital frees. And they just, they were relentless. They never gave up. They just worked and worked and worked. and turnovers and as I said earlier Eva Pendergast's free taken was just off the charts. I think on the 43rd minute after that maybe purple patch from Sarsfields they're up by two but it was a long time then without a score but Dixborough just kept in the game didn't they? Yeah and again that came down to I suppose Dixborough just squeezing out the attacks from Sarsfields like they they created the the chances but because of the, the players they had filtered back like it was definitely a tactical thing where if the Sarsfields players they were getting hit by two, three Dixborough players just refusing to let them to letting them win. Like they were, this is going to be their day, and and and, and uh, kudos to them. It actually was a brilliant um, victory for them. Yeah, I think it was eight times the sides were level, but that was the important period. It was down the home straight. Dixborough seven in a row. They really saw the line and they went straight over it. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think Amy, Amy Clifford got two points and then won a free. Um, but they were they were kept building attacks like, um, and then they were just fouling. But they were still there at the very end. Like they were still building the attacks and getting the chances. And and I thought they might have kind of lost their chance. They hit three balls straight into Laura Glynn, the Sarsis goalie, and I was like, you need to be taking your chances. But in fairness, they kept going. They're a seriously fit team and they never gave up. And they worked, as I said already, and I'm repeating myself, their work rate was unbelievable. What do you put that down to? Is it is it hunger? Like, I know Sarsfield's obviously the dominant force. It's going to be the easy acquisition now, but sometimes that raw hunger that you've touched on a couple of times, it's hard to match that, I guess. Yeah, and I suppose I, everybody in the in the country is probably tipping Sarsfield to win this, and no more than Thomas's hurlers last night going out there, nothing to lose, and just go at them and attack them. And they did, and they just never died. No matter when the goal went in for Sarsfield, they kept coming back, and... They just wanted it, and they were refusing to let today not be their day. Yeah, like Sarsfield's obviously a team of a generation almost. They're still not going to go away. Just, I suppose, a blot on the road for them more than Anthony you would expect. Yeah, like, absolutely. I think this is going to, like, Sarsfield have been unbelievable champions and, and champions of Galway as well. I don't see them going anywhere anytime soon. If not, if Anthony, I think this is going to make them... Um, more hungry, revenge to get back here again and to win that All Ireland. And they're a, a fantastic team. They're without Neve McGrath today. She will no doubt come back into the fold. She's a huge, huge player. Um, but yeah, Sarsis will be back. There's no doubt about that. I think you said that with a smile on your face. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've been at the wrong side of them a few times, but they're just a fantastic team. They won six out of the last seven county finals in Galway. Um, I think a lot of their players. This, this is their seventh. Club All Ireland, which is just an unbelievable um, set to have. I don't know how many inter county hurlers have played here seven times, and not mind for one club to do it. Um, but they're a brilliant side, and I do think they will be back. And I do think it'll, I would be surprised if I see them lifting the cup next year. Dixborough, though, let's focus on them, All Ireland champions. It's a fantastic achievement for the club. Absolutely. Um, to come out and win their first Inter title only about a month ago um, and to beat St. Vincent's was huge turned around then and played Lockheed and Shamrocks in the semi-final and like to come to a Crow Park today in Club All Ireland and, and go up against a team that has so much experience and won the last two and has three Club All Irelands already um, and to just be able to just come out with confidence but I suppose that's bred into the Kikini um, you can never really write off a Kikini team and uh, as I said they're just you know worthy champions today and it was a fantastic game and um, a huge uh, credit to Komogi today and it was just brilliant to watch. Yeah it was almost a real throwback goal with Kenny battle referee he let a lot go there was a lot of bodies that was sticks where made it very compact you know it was a bruising encounter out there. Yeah absolutely like you know there was and in Sarsi's work rate was good too like you know when the player got ball there was two or three hits going in and it was let flow now there was a couple of calls you could say maybe questionable that famous rule where if a player is taking somebody on and somebody and the other and the two players go down and it's free with the person with the possession um, against the person with the possession it's definitely a rule that needs to be looked at because a couple of times that went against Sarsfields and went for Dixborough so it's just little things like that but I suppose it was a, a brilliant game to watch as I said it was all physicality was huge in it and um, it's a great kind of a game for Camogie and, and look they're fantastic ambassadors both teams um, for, for Camogie I don't want to go off on a wild, wild tangent with that rule as a spectator watching on. It's infuriating. I can only imagine what it's like when you're there to come out and you are swarmed in. Like, why always go back to what on earth are you supposed to do? Yeah, it's very hard. And sometimes it does come down to a bit of the referee's interpretation, which is a pity. I think we need to seriously look at that rule and get it addressed or get rid of it. Um, something needs to happen because it's just... There's too many inconsistencies now and, and players are getting very, very frustrated with it. So, um, And as, as you said, spectators are getting frustrated with it. So it's definitely something um, that needs to be challenged, looked at. And like, we want Komogi to stay moving in the right way. We want Komogi to stay building. And I think maybe addressing that rule is definitely a positive for Komogi. Focusing on some of those frees, Eva Prendergast was red hot. You could tell from the very first one, she was in her zone. I think it was 10 she finished up in total just an outstanding performance uh, absolutely and she was all over the field as well like 
it wasn't just from the free take and even Pendergast was good she was brilliant her work rate as I said she got a vital interception there um, on Orna McGrath to, to, to make her put the ball wide but she was just on fire and a huge leader for Kilkenny as well um, for Dixburg Mogi and no doubt there's a lot of these girls that will be in the Kilkenny senior team in the near future yeah, I think you look down in the teams, the programme there in front of you, there's some quality performances right down the spine of that Dixborough side. Yeah, like I said earlier, Amy Clifford I thought was very good. They actually had um, number 20, Lucia Gahan, came on there and I thought she was very influential when she came. She was stuck in everything. She got a couple of hand passes off that led to scores. Uh, she turned over three or four balls and her work rate was, was very good as well. So I think she was a big factor that turned the tide for Dixborough in the second half. Judging by the PA system and the celebrations behind us, I think it could be a wild night in Kilkenny. Yeah, do you know, it, it will be, I'd say, a wild week in Kilkenny somehow. Um, but yeah, a credit to Dixborough, in fairness, they were they were thoroughly deserved this win today. Um, and no doubt they'll celebrate long into Christmas anyway with the win. And um, look, I, I said earlier, I've no doubt Sarsis will be back. They're fantastic champions and always have been. And look, this is going to hurt, but no, no doubt about it they'll use this as motivation for next year. And lastly as an overview important that the finals here were brilliant intermediate final as well that Kerry champions is just glamour is just it's an incredible story when you dig a little bit deeper in the surface but to be here in Crow Park I know it's quite close to Christmas the attendance might mean the biggest today but it is important that these do take centre stage. Absolutely, I think every player needs to get a run out in Crow Park. Um, it's a huge experience, and it's a fantastic t field, like and facility, and it's just like it's the pinnacle. You always want to play in Crow Park, and um, to do it on a club all Ireland um, is just unbelievable. And I think it's only fit, rightly fitting that it is here, even close to Christmas. Um, but yeah, and I think it's it's massive for the promotion of Camogie that we keep getting Crow Park for these games, and uh, we try now. I'd like to see, as you said, more attendance, more people at games, um, and you'll get the support and get the, you know, I suppose the buzz and camogie back and get get it, get the stadiums go you know, full. Um, hopefully, hopefully, we'll get to the day where we see an All Ireland Senior Camogie final with a, a packed a stadium. Um, but as I said, yeah, definitely have these games in Crow Park. They're just once in a lifetime things, and everybody, it's just a huge experience to be here. Yeah, and I suppose, lastly, games like that, high quality, down to the wire, can only help with the growth of Camogie as a whole. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and it just goes to show that like Camogie is growing. Like, we're getting more physicality. We're scoring. The girls are getting um, scoring from 60, 70 yards. You know, the work rate and everything. Um, it's just Camogie is growing, and we need to, you know, put the I suppose energy behind it and get the support in and get the people behind it to to help push it on further. Um, but as I said, it's a fantastic day today. I know it's near Christmas, but you know the pitch looks absolutely immaculate. The lights and everything, um, it's just a fantastic uh, facility. And to get chances like this to play don't come very often in the players' careers. And I think it's important that it, it, it makes it, it's made happen. Well, thanks, sir, for joining us. We'll let you go back out of the cold. It is quite chilly here in Crow Park, but uh, congrats again to Dixborough. Yeah, exactly, John. Uh, thanks a million and thanks for having me.